Then now we will begin the Data Journalism Korea Conference 2021. First, we will hear opening remarks and welcoming remarks. The opening remarks will be given by the co-chairperson of Data Journalism Korea Conference, Ms. Kwon Hae Jin, and also Professor Hwang Yong Seok, the Director of Digital Communication Research Center at Congo University. Then we will first hear from Dr. Kwon Hae Jin. Please give her a big round of applause as she makes her way up to the stage. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Kwon Hae Jin, Data Journalism of Korea CEO. I'd like to welcome to all the audience watching the Data Journalism Korea conference. And we are able to show what data journalism in Korea is about to the rest of the world through the real-time YouTube streaming. Data Journalism Korea Conference is a conference which makes the programs with the former and current journalists, such as the data journalists, developers, and designers in order to have the promotion of the ecology of data journalism and information sharing. The organizers of the conference prepared a variety of programs again this year. Yesterday, we had the pre-conference with hands-on workshop on news big data analysis using big kinds and also an online online roundtable for data journalists would be with much popularity. And we are going to have the main conference today, and I'm very happy to see that more than 200 people finished their pre-registration. That will be followed by the second Data Journalism Award Ceremony. I sincerely hope that we can learn, connect, and have new insights all together through the conference. Lastly, my deepest thanks to the many staff to organize this event despite so many challenges. I applaud you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Kwon Hae-jin, for your remarks. Now we will invite Professor Hwang yong seok the co-chairperson of Data Journalism Korea Conference, to the stage. Please give him a big hand. Hello, my name is Hwang yong I'm a professor of the Media Communications Department at Congo University. I'm pleased that Data Journalism Conference has been able to be held continuously despite the challenging circumstances. And so many people have provided support to make this conference possible. So we are taking part in the Korea Press Foundation's Journalism Week for two years in a row, and the KPF has extended us with various supports. I would like to thank Mr. Chung bong gun the Executive Director of News Circulation Business at KPF. PF and Mr. Chong De Pyo, the co-chair of the committee. After the conference, the Data Journalism Award will be held, and I would like to also thank those who provided help, Ms. Irene and Mr. Kim Min-sung of Google News Initiative, and President Song Jae of Korea Broadcasting Journalists Association. Above all, this conference has become possible because we have a community of data journalists, and this conference is for you, so I hope you will engage in active exchanges and learn a lot from the conference. Lastly, I would like to also thank members of the organizing committee and DOT planner uh, for its role as a secretariat and students at the Graduate School of Congo University for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Hwang yong -seok. Now we will hear welcoming remarks from Mr. Chung bong the Executive Director of News Circulation Business at Korea Press Foundation. Please give him a big hand. Greetings. I am Chung bong -gun, the Executive Director of News Circulation Business at Korea Press Foundation. I extend my heartfelt welcome to you all for coming to Data Journalism Korea Conference 2021. As said by the two speakers before me, I express my regret that the conference had to be held online again this year. I welcome those who are joining us via YouTube today. And I would like to express my gratitude to Jada Journalism Korea and Digital Communication Research Center at Congo University for hosting this conference. I would like to also extend my appreciation to our keynote speakers, Mr. Lee gyu -yun, CEO of JTBC, and Ms. Park hae -yun, Deputy Editor of Graphics at the New York Times, and to all other speakers. 
This conference provides an opportunity to look back on the accomplishments made in data journalism and to give an outlook for the future. By sharing our wisdom experience in data-based innovation, we will be able to discover new value of data journalism, and this new discovery will enable us to take another step forward. It's been four years since the Korea Press Foundation joined Data Journalism Korea Conference. In particular, since last year, we've held a pre-conference to kick off the Journalism Week. Journalism Week facilitates communication between the media and the public, and it is a week for celebration. It's the only event of its kind in Korea. I'm truly honored that Data Journalism Conference is heralding its beginning. Thank you for the opportunity once again. With COVID-19, we're all facing new changes that we've never experienced before at a very rapid pace. The media is also doing its best to present a way forward for our community to move forward in this difficult time. Data journalism identifies disinformation, discloses the truth, and delivers meaningful information to us by showing objective information based on data. The foundation is also contributing to creating new value through sharing, cooperating, and opening news data through our news big data analysis system called Big Kinds. I hope this conference will serve as a meaningful time to find insights for data journalism to move forward in a new and innovative way. The foundation will also provide support in advancing data journalism further. Once again, I would like to thank everyone for attending this conference. And at the end of the conference, there will be the Data Journalism Awards. And I extend my congratulations in advance to those who will receive the award. Thank you. Thank you, Executive Director Chong bong And now we will hear our keynote address. So after each presentation, there will be a 10-minute Q&A session. So allow me to introduce the first speaker. The first speaker is Mr. Lee Gyun, the CEO of JTBC. So allow me to introduce to you who Mr. Lee Gyun is. He's been a journalist for the past 33 years, and he's been the first head of the Bureau of the Press at JTBC. And Lee Gyun's Spotlight is a program that he has run for the past six years. So he's been a person at broadcasting and journalism and news and so on. So he has many disciplines. So the title of his presentation is The Future of Data Journalism. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Good morning. Very nice to see you all. Actually, as a keynote speaker, I am here to talk about the data journalism. I am very much humbled to say that I am able to make any speech about that. I'm actually a student here. I'd like to learn from you as well, because the world is changing day by day. In the middle of that, I'd like to know and share with you what the shape of data journalism is, and I want to. I was also want to know if my concerns are resonating with yours as well. So I'd like to have those opportunities with you. That's why I accepted this invitation. Most of you, the audience, and also the experts of the data journalism watching this YouTube, you might feel that I am a very old guy. I started data journalism a long time ago. It's been about 10 years I alienated myself from the data journalism, actually. The only thing I can say to you is that I was actually one of the pioneers of the data journalism. I was the one who tried many efforts, and those efforts of mine as trials that have continued for about 10 years has become a footprint of the past. So that's my feeling now. That is why I chose the topic of my presentation today as the lineage and future of data journalism. I'm also a CEO of uh, the media. As the CEO and the top management, I also have a fresh look at the media and the data journalism from the perspective of the management, what and how we can accept from the data journalism to the media organization. So let me start my 
talk today. In the 1990s, that was the time when we used the word C-A-R, data journalism. The word was not there then. We had C-A-R or computer-aided reporting. So it means that we used computers when we report. After that, in the 2000s, data journalism started to take root as a jargon. And also, another word came out like algorithm, robot journalism. But I can tell you that the algorithm, robot journalism, can be a part of data journalism as well. So I can tell you that from the 2000s, we had the era of data journalism altogether. Let's talk about 2021, now, today. How do I use data journalism now and here? I'm actually a frequent user of data journalism in the form of the big kinds, which has been produced by KPF. I'm using the big kinds in many ways. I can tell you my examples. Immediately before I became the CEO, I had planned a special program with the commission by the top. That was a special investigation. So that was the title for the lives changed by COVID-19. We had the three series documentary. In the time of planning the documentary, or I can when I can write columns, actually I use the big kinds every time. I just put my idea into the big kinds in order to see not just articles, but also many other things. For example, what I do and the big kinds is that if I want to see a plan of the we go to the era of COVID-19 and the time of changes then I go into the big kinds I key in the words like new normal or post COVID so these are the keywords I use so the thing I wanted to know is about the new normal right so I wanted to know the changed world by the COVID-19 and then I was able to see all different other results what kind of articles are there what structures they had in the newspapers it was very easy for me to have the structural view of the keywords used in the media so it's quite easy so in the big kinds this is big kind and you key in the keyword of new normal and then from the 1990s until today today means the time of the day I want I was working on that right so I I was looking at the patterns of the articles. If there is a result of 671 articles, then since the 1990s up until 2020, these the words of keywords have been identified in what form and in what frequency they have been appearing in the newspaper. This is also a result of the tool used by Big Kinds as well. You see the trend of these keywords. So I can have an insight, like, for example, in 2010, the word new normal started for the first time. And also suddenly from September of that year, the word new normal appeared out of nowhere. I wondered why. That was because the Wall Street Journal used the word new normal. And after that, many other media used that word so much. Therefore, there has a sp spike in there. And then they had the very substitute period. Only after after COVID-19, we have another spike coming up. So COVID-19 was found to be not temporary. It f was found to be everlasting. So it could be a momentum to change the whole world. That was found in about July last year. That was the time when the word new normal was accepted to the general public of the world and it became a serious word afterwards. Also, this is another example to see from the big kinds. The only thing you need is to log in, and you can see these things. So I'm still talking about the word new normal, right? So I use the word here in order to have the relationship here. So it has the relationship with other words like smartphone, life site system, president, global, smart life system, the fourth industrial revolution as well. So these are actually the connected words that are often used by the media when it comes to new normal. 
normal. So think of these words, smart, life, system, president, global. Then it gives you an idea that you have to go deeper into these new words as well. Then you also you might be knowing that you should use these words in your next articles. So that's what I felt as well. Let's go back to 1999. For me, that was the time when I started to have a very serious you know, works on the writing the article here. So as a planner of the articles, I was using this tool on a daily basis and I chose big kinds from KPF in order to continue our writing. Also, when I was asked or commissioned to write something on, that's also the time when I use big kinds. So if I go back to 1999, I would like to show you examples that have been found to be interesting when I started to use the system. So these are the articles that I actually delved into in order to use those in the system. So CAR was often used in 1990s, as I said before. So that is computer-assisted reporting, I said. So this is one example. It was in the 1999 when I had the Langun report, and that was the site report. I had all the collection of resources, such as interviews. I had Excel programs or any other statistical programs to have all these resources in, as you see here. It was the time when CAR was proper because this reporting was based on the computer. And as I said before, up until 1990s, CAR was the it word, and I used the tool myself at that time. So this is another example of showing you the article that has been based on the CAR. I used the Excel actually, right? By 2004, another word came up, that's GIS, Geographic Information System. That's the reporting based on the GIS. Actually, I've been to the conference in the United States by that time, and I brought a brochure in English, and I looked at the brochure and learned that there is a GIS or things like that. I wanted to use GIS for my reporting, but I was that serious at that time. I was just only trying once and for all. And then 2004, I was reading deeply in a book of GIS, and I learned that there are five steps of doing the GIS. I learned myself, I taught myself about this as well. So I went to a computer company to try to the reporting based on the GIS. Of course, that was very lightweight program of GIS. This is nothing comparable to your system nowadays. But we had our five steps to go through, and one application was the reporting on the tropical night heat system analysis. In the city of Seoul, I was able to see that some areas like Yeongdeungpo and Kuro were not so much hot, while the other areas were so much hot and at night so they, they cannot sustain the heat. As a result of this GIS system, I was able to see the results of the, all the impacts from the buildings, rows, concrete on the street, and so on. I was able to combine those resources from the GIS system and the insight from the areas and the sites. The result is that the more concrete you have, the less green you have in your neighborhood. So the neighborhood without green might be hotter than other areas, not having so much concrete. So I think this is the very early version of GIS reporting that you're doing right now. Another example. So this is the practical analysis that I did. Actually, that reporting of about the tropical heat was the first trial. I didn't know much about the technology, and the system companies didn't know either. So I feel quite embarrassed looking back when I was doing that. So I could have done better. I could have done things more interesting, but trial itself was meaningful for me at that time. So you might be laughing at this when you see this.
but this is the analysis. It was about 2005 at that time. For the first time in the academy, there is a new jargon called social network or social network analysis. That new keyword began to emerge, so it's called SNA. So by that time, using SNA or social network analysis, I was wondering what reporting I could make using this. I happened to have a meeting with Professor Kim Yong Hak, who used to be the president of Yonsei University. So the professor had a textbook for college students about the social network. His book had volume one and volume two. That was very difficult to understand at that time. So, well, after receiving those two books, I was wondering what I could do. So I had my agony, what I can do. So probably I can use an SNA for my reporting. Also, I happened to know the HR database in Chungang Ilbo, Chungang Daily. That's who's who in Chungang Ilbo. And the Chungang Ilbo's who's who was bigger than any other counterpart in Korea. So I was trying to combine this SNA concept with the who's who. So I decided to have the analysis on the power elites in Korea. About 300,000 power elites, so to speak, in Korea could have been connected by region, by academic background and neighborhoods and so on. So I was wondering what kind of connection they might have. So this book is not sold anymore, but this book itself was very thick. So that's the result of my analysis. So we ha also had the newspaper articles about the analysis into the power elites of the people. And then also this article says that this power elite, which which had been very strong in the past is now crumbling down. So some of my bosses were supportive of this writing, but many of the reporters at the time were not so much. If you are looking back at this newspaper article right now, you can accept it without any reactions. But that was like 2005. Please remember that was a long time ago. Many people argued, why do we have to carry this article? You are so nonsensical. What are you doing this for? Of course, some of my seniors were a pre apprehending me, but you know, some others, or oh, many more others, were not approving me for doing this. So that was very negative reaction I had after writing this article. This is the deep analysis of my article. So this is the process I used. By 2008, finally, this was the time my, when my curiosity was heightened and I really wanted to use data journalism. So I didn't want to commit to others. I wanted to do it myself. So even if it's a small project, I can be the whole owner of the project. So I decided to taught myself. So I had a very simple tool called Usenet that was free trial for one or two months when it was distributed. So I asked around, I called professors to ask questions, and then I was able to use the Usenet myself. I key in the data for the results. So this is the result of my efforts. There was a junior reporter of uh, my mind, and he was very thorough in the legal affairs. And he had a, an article about the propensity and orientation of the judges. I was at the desk, and I was responsible for his coverage. I told him, I told my junior staff reporter, that you are writing this article, I know that, and if you just bring me the resources, I will do the uh, application of your resources into the UCNet, and I will give you back the result of that analysis w with one condition. The analysis and that work 
network analysis ha should, has been done by Yi Gu Yan myself. You have to write that down. You have to make a comment that this resource was given by Yi Gu Yan. So if you look at very closely right now, you see my name in here. So I was doing this for fun actually. So I did the homework at night at home. So that was the analysis of the propensities of the judges. Now, in 2010s, we have the period of the smartphones. S-A-R replaced the word S-N-A. S-A-R was not gaining so much popularity. It was kind of the derivative of the word C-A-R. With the advance of the computer and smartphone, systems, we used the word SAR at that time. That was about 2020 when we had a special report on the smart things and the IT. In Seoul National University, they had the smart algorithm data analysis team. So we had the experiment of writing up the articles about the baseball games. So it was kind of competition between me and the team. So I wrote my article about the baseball games, which I watched. So I wrote 1,200 letters in 35 minutes. That's not slow, right? But the algorithm by the team took only three minutes. But after I finished it, there were two errors, two typos. And the algorithm which finished the writing in three minutes did not have any typo at all, while I had two. So that gives me a lot of thought. So probably the reporters and journalists can just stay put at home for a while, or the reporters can stay put forever by the use of the algorithms. So I was both comfortable and fearful at the same time. So robot journalism was gaining popularity at that time. Now, let's talk about 2021 and plus regarding the data journalism. Nowadays, I am looking at this data journalism right now as the management rather than journalists. I'm collecting all of the resources regarding this. So one of the things I would like to show you is the prospect by Reuters Institute for the Study of Journalism in Oxford University. It's about the analysis of the impact by the COVID-19, as expected by many other organizations. We can also see the increase of the social media and the increase of the advertisement and over-the-top systems. Also, the progress of the technology related to the fourth industrial revolution. These are all the areas impacted by the data journalism. Nine out of 10 said that digital innovation building would be the most important thing according to our survey. About 69% or 70% almost said that the AI, data, and metaverse will make biggest impact onto the journalism within the next five years. Let me now talk about the example of The Guardian recently. In 2020, they issued an opinion article written by AI in September. As you see here, the first sentence of the article is that, I am not a human, I am a robot, a thinking robot. I use only 1.12% of my cognitive capacity. That's a reporting made by the AI. And also BBC created a documentary using AI. The documentary lasted about one hour. That is also based on the archive owned by BBC. The archive was also in the use of the AI programs to create a, a do, do, documentary. Facebook is another company that is very active in metaverse by 2030 AR and many other things will replace the internet of today. A lot of investment is made for the researches by Facebook. Before Facebook releases a product, they're also having the press conference in the workroom in the metaverse with the reporters virtually. That's 
skip this. Recently, this is K-pop related article based on the data journalism and resources we have. Time is left. I have to be punctual. I'd like to just close up and wrap up now. For example, algorithms, metaverse, or big data are likely to replace the current data journalism. What conversion can be made and what convergence can be made amongst them? That is my interest nowadays. I'm not saying that this kind of data journalism will have to be stay on one article or one kind of activity only. It should be linked to the change of the whole mechanism or trend of the data journalism. Only when it does so, there is a future for data journalism. I am punctual to keep the 30-minute time frame. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Lee. While listening to your presentation, we have received a couple of questions on the chat box. So can we spend time first on answering those questions first? And then also, if we have more time, we will also have discussion with you about the data journalism you presented. As the audience heard, Mr. Lee Kyu Yan is a quite well-known figure for a leading presenter of a social affairs documentary. You have given us the presentation regarding the investigative report and data journalism starting from 1990s until today. And you were the pioneer of this sort of new journalism type. So many of us must have learned for the first time you are a pioneer of the data journalism. Thank you very much for detailed presentation. We have very comprehensive questions. Two of them are, you have given us the cases in your experience, out of your experience, what is the most memorable one in your experience in this investigative and data journalism? Yes, thank you. What does data mean? If I ask this question, I would have to answer this way. Using GIS, Geographic Information System, if I write an article on this, it can be a just pastime. For example, it can have the visualization of the data we know. It was first trial that is meaningful, but that was out of my curiosity. It was not linked to the finding of the new path of journalism. On the other hand, when I had the Nanguk report, I was looking at the structure of the poverty and the current status of the poor people many new things came out. So it was not the official starting of the data journalism, but I am proud to say that the Nanguk reporting that I did for the first time, to look at the data of the poverty in the neighborhoods as the first trial of the data journalism, I was able to see how deep the poverty was and how difficult the people's lives were using the data in the Nanguk area. So that was the report I can remember for long as the first case of the such reporting. Thank you. Second question, now we are still in the COVID era, right? So in relation to COVID-19, what is the biggest issue of the data journalism in relation to the COVID-19? Yes, for the generation of COVID-19 or era of COVID-19, so to speak, I've been to the US a, couple, a month ago. I was looking at the areas of the AR, VR, metaverse, and algorithm by meeting with experts in these areas. And COVID-19 is something related to the existence of the fourth industrial revolution. When we had the word of fourth industrial revolution, people argued whether this is really actual or not. But I'm sure that COVID-19 is accelerating the fourth industrial revolution. And the people who are just you know, facing the fourth industrial revolution in books are now realizing that it's in their lives. So the fourth industrial revolution has been 
cleared and also it has been more concrete. So what is the essence of the fourth industrial revolution? That is the data and AI. What kind of big data are we using? And also what kind of data we can get by making the systems learn through the machine learning and big data? What kind of results can we get? That's the homework we are being given because of the COVID-19. And at the same time, it's also an opportunity. Yes, thank you. We are seeing more and more questions. In order for the data journalism to function correctly, what kind of structures do we have to change? And also, in the newsroom, what kind of collaboration is expected amongst all the members in the newsroom? Also, in order to realize this, what kind of investment or decision making has to be made? And what difficulties are, can there be? And what, how can they go through the path? Yes, thank you. In the question about making it into an article, I am not an expert, so our moderator knows more about that than myself. So I just give the bucket to yourself. As a management person at the moment, I have to tell you this. Data journalism that we know of, for example, can give impact to the future of JTBC as the media as a whole. That's my concern nowadays. I've been recently appointed to the head of JTBC ever since then. I've been thinking about the new breakthrough of the media. So we have to think about the next generation of digital generation. Everyone is digital generation, but we have to know the post-digital generation. We have to know what kind of impact it can be. So the impact should not stay in one article only. The impact should go throughout the whole media, the whole broadcasting companies. So I'm sure that the impact will be felt by all those organizations. Having said that, what is new nowadays should be understood in what way. We have to continue to look at those things, but also we have to look at new things as well, like big data and algorithm that we see more recently from a couple of years ago, we have to connect it to the management of the media so that they can be prepared for the future. That's the work I'm doing right now. Of course, there's a limitation for any investment, for any decision making. Doing something unexpected or doing something that you have never done is fearsome. And also, even though you are not making a big jump, you have to be able to make visible result. That requires investment and people. For now, I have to tell you that in preparation for the new world created by the COVID-19 and by the fourth industrial revolution, we have to renew this data journalism so that it can become a momentum for developing the media further. And that's the framework we are making at the JTBC for the first time. Yes, thank you. You mentioned people, right? So in the JTBC, do you have any concrete plan for the people? So are you making new plans? Yes. We cannot hire so many people at a time, but probably we can start using the existing people and then we can add more people by hiring some more. We are planning to increase the size of our company that way. Yes, your presentation today has been talking about your experimental reporting that started about 20 years ago. You've been comprehensing all these developments. Some have changed and some have not changed, I believe, because of the attributes and nature. So if you are interested in the data journalism out of the audience today, they must be very insightful. Thank you very much.